How do you build your partner team for a successful real estate business? Hey there, it is Sylvia Dana with EXP Realty in West Michigan, and I'm also the founder of The Sylvia System. And today on my podcast, Think Future Real Estate with Sylvia Dana, I want to address new agents but I also want to address those agents who maybe just need to relaunch their business. Maybe you've been in a slump and you need to level up. Whatever it is, whether you're new, you know, intermediate, seasoned, and you just want to level up, this podcast is for you. We are going to be talking about really building that tribe of other professionals in this industry around you to be your mentors, to be your coaches, to help you cross the finish line with each closing and help you build that family and that tribe. I'm really excited to tell you my story of how I got started with my first few deals and started to build this team around me and didn't even realize I was doing it. I hope you get a lot from it. I hope that you take notes and I hope you do the homework at the end. So please sit back and enjoy tonight's topic. And let's talk about building your partner team. Who is your partner team? You're a new agent. You're an agent who just switched brokerages. You are an agent who is relaunching their business. You're an agent who's trying to improve their business. And now you're going to build partners around you. Who are these partners? What is this team going to do for you? They are going to help you do better business, be your mentors, teach you. It's the tribe you're going to put around yourself. You're going to be in your own advocate to build this team. Let's talk about who this team can be. Who can be on this team? The first thing I want to say is co-op agents. What's a co-op agent? A co-op agent is that agent on the other side of the deal. So you're, you have a buyer and you work with the listing agent to do a deal. You negotiate a deal with that listing agent and ta-da, now you are co-op agents. So co-op agents can be part of your team. What do I mean by, by that? How? How can they be part of your team? Because you're probably like, well, Sylvia, I haven't, you know, if I, if I haven't done a deal with them yet, how can they be part of my team to help me learn? And in 2016, when I became a brand new realtor, I got my license issued to me on November 1st, 2016. And on November 6th, 2016, somebody that I knew on Facebook contacted me and said, Sylvia, I see that you're in real estate now. We just fired our buyer's agent. We didn't ever sign anything with her. And uh, she fired us and we fired her and we're done. Now I had worked with these particular clients before because I used to sell cars and that's how I knew them. And we were Facebook friends. And so they knew, already knew they wanted to work with me. They said, but we want to see this particular house right now. Now I had not had my orientation at the board yet. I did not have access to the MLS. I didn't know diddly, basically nothing. I knew nothing. <laughs> I was with um, a different brokerage at the time. Um, and, you know, even if I had called my managing broker, I mean, I think I tried, but he wasn't available. It was, it was late at night. It was like seven o'clock at night or six o'clock at night or something. <laughs> um, and, um, you know, I didn't expect him to have to answer. I was hoping he didn't though. And uh, I said to these clients, of course I can show you this house. Yes, what's the address? Again, I didn't know a thing. So then I called the other listing agent and said, hey, told her the same story, brand new agent, don't know what I'm doing, haven't taken the orientation yet, uh, don't have access to the MLS, don't have access to any of the super key, we had super at the time, don't know anything. Is there any way on God's green earth that you would be able to meet my clients and myself, you know, at this listing. And she said, yes, I can do that. I can be there in 45 minutes. Great. <laughs> so I go, the agent meets us. She opens the door, lets us look around, sees us off. I mean, it was awesome. And so what I did is I let that other agent know that I was so green, I didn't have access to anything. And, and I really wanted to show her listing and is there a way she could help me? And she agreed. And so I advocated for myself. I didn't blame my managing broker for not answering the phone. <laughs> I didn't blame my board for not, you know, having the orientation in time. Um, I didn't beat myself up for not knowing anything. I just figured it out. 
and that co-op agent was awesome. We didn't end up putting an offer in that house, but she was super helpful. I did a follow up with her and thanked her. Your co-op agents can help you. If you are genuine, you know, and, and authentic and just real, like I am new and I am so sorry that I'm putting this on you. I know it's not your job to help me, but are you willing to help me <laughs> as I'm getting started with this? And the response will be positive for the most part. Scott West was the very first co-op agent I did work with. So, so this particular client, these clients, we did find a home and we did put an offer in on a home. When we were negotiating, um, the agent called me and we were talking and I said, look, I am brand new. I just got my license. I don't know what I'm doing. And honestly, if there's something that you see that you're willing to coach me on, um, I will receive that and I would appreciate it. And he's like, no problem. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to talk you through this. So he told me what the steps were, what I needed to do, how I could write the offer better. <laughs> okay. And before, and he's like, talk to the lender about um, this offer. So, so that's what I did. <laughs> so then I called the lender because my clients already had a lender. I didn't know this lender. So that leads me to my next thing is lenders. Scott Riley, a different Scott, but this was a lender, Scott Riley, mortgage one. Scott, I'm a brand new realtor. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm working with your clients. This is what's happening. Here's the deal. Here's the offer I'm writing. How is this correct? Is this how I should write it? He coached me as well. Yes, this is what you're going to do. This is correct. Write it this way. He was, he was amazing. Because again, I was authentic. I was genuine. I asked for help. I advocated for myself to get that help and was also very appreciative at the same time and teachable. I listened to what they told me to do. So the deal got under contract. And then I asked the other, the agent on their side, okay, now what? He's like, okay, now you're going to order an inspection. Cool. Who's an inspector? <laughs> He's like, here's some names of some inspectors. Neat. Okay. And I also asked the lender, Hey, who are some inspectors and found some, <laughs> and then called an inspector, I scheduled the inspection went to the inspection, met the inspector, learned about what he was inspecting. And again, that was starting to build my team. When I got the inspection back, again, I didn't know anything. Got the inspection back. I just forwarded that expect inspection to the lender. You're not supposed to do that. You're not supposed to forward that inspection to a lender, to the guy on the, to the agent on the other side. You're not supposed to do that. I didn't forward it to the agent on the other side. I kind of had that much common sense, but I did forward it to the lender because he was kind of coaching me through things and he was so nice he's like sylvia um so he called me he's like i got your email i'm deleting it you never want to send the lender the inspection report <laughs> oh it's just not necessary so just don't do it and i'm like okay thank you so he taught me i didn't know that going in all right when you become a real estate agent you cannot know everything and no mentor, no sponsor, no team leader can really possibly prepare you for everything. You just have to jump in again and not knowing really what's on the other side and just go through it. So anyway, co-op agents, lenders, you know, we'll talk you through things. Title reps. So the next part of your team that you want to build is, um, title rep. So depending on the state or area, and you might call them attorneys, you, your title company, um, the, the, where you're going to do the closing, who's going to, you know, do the paperwork for the deal to get closed and you to get paid. That's what I'm talking about. So in my area, they're title companies. And, um, and so we have title reps who kind of represent the companies and work with realtors and, you know, do marketing and, um, you know, help realtors that, start using their company and that kind of thing. So you really want to get to know a couple of title reps. I'm going to be giving you homework at the end. Okay. So just bear with me. You don't really know what the heck is going on and you're a brand new agent. You don't know that you have to order a title. Nobody tells you that really. I don't remember my managing broker ever telling me that, um, but you have to order a title. And there's a couple different times when you have to do that. A, if you are a listing agent, you want to order preliminary title before you list the house and, and have your title rep explain what's going on there with you. 
with that preliminary title. When you're under contract as the listing agent, you have to order title officially being under contract. And then as a buyer's agent, you also order title. And I'm not here to talk more about that right now. I'm talking about building your team. But long story short, you don't really understand things. So it's good for you to get out there and talk to some title companies and learn what is title? What do you as an agent have to do with title when it comes to your listings, when it comes to your deals? My story about one of my title reps at First American Title, David Klein, is in 2018, my dad was in the hospital and things were just getting bleak and it was happening very fast and he was declining. And we really needed a power of attorney in place um, in order you know, for me to be able to take care of some things. Um, and he was declining so fast and I wasn't sure, you know, if we had time and it was in the Detroit area. I live in the Grand Rapids area in the West side of Michigan, about two and a half hours away. Um, but I was there at the hospital with my dad. I didn't, you know, and, and there was no, um, notary who had to handle the, the power of attorney, um, no notary at the hospital at that time. And so I'm like, crap, I need a notary and I need him right now to come and help me with this power of attorney thing. And so I called my title rep, David Klein, and I told him, you know, again, it was like, it was, this was like four, three or four o'clock um, on a Friday. And I explained the situation and I said, do you have any title reps that are notaries on this side of the state that are in the area that could come and, and do, notarize this power of attorney for me? He said, let me see what I can do. And he called me back like 10 minutes later. He's like, okay, I got a guy. He's coming. He's a good friend of mine. He's going to be there. What room are you in? You know, and so I gave him all the information. And so this gentleman comes, it was like by six o'clock that night. And, you know, he comes in, he shakes my dad's hand. We signed it, notarized it. It was so special. <laughs> okay. That, that, cause my dad, like by the next day, I never got to talk to him again. You know, he was just out, you know, sleep, asleep, um, unconscious, really. These partners, when I'm talking about your lenders, your title reps, can be so important to everything in your life, not just your business. So really make relationships with these people is what I'm saying. Photographers. So when you become a listing agent, you might, you know, not want to pay for pictures. But let me just say that you need to. They're like $125. You can do it. Figure it out how you're going to do it because it's going to make your listing so much better. Back to co-op agents. It was one of my, I, I hadn't listed very many houses. I had probably listed like three houses total by this time. Um, and there was a house that I had listed and I had, you know, was taking pretty good pictures. I mean, I have some background in photography. I know how to take pictures, but I didn't have a good camera. It was like really my iPhone, but I was taking some excellent pictures. I mean, they were nice. They were bright. They were centered. I, you know, I knew how to stage things in the picture. So they weren't terrible pictures, but they weren't professional either. Saving money. I didn't have a lot. I didn't have any money really, <laughs> but I had a listing and, um, and we got under contract. And then my, my seller, we got her under contract in the home she was buying. And after a couple weeks, the deal on her house that she was selling, that buyer walked away. And then we had to skip, go back in the market. So I had to tell the, the listing agent for the house she was buying, like, hey, guess what? We're not under contract anymore. Buyer, and I'm, I'm working so hard to get, get a, uh, a new buyer and get it under contract again in Michigan and in my area. In my MLS, what can happen is if you have a buyer who needs to sell their home in order to purchase a new home, if their house isn't under contract and they have a contract on a new house, that listing agent and seller, they can keep marketing the property as if it weren't under and take a different offer if they wanted to. So he said, I tell you, what, we're going to give you 10 days um and uh, to sell and here he's like he looked at the listing he's like here's what you're gonna do <laughs> like he coached me he said you need to get professional pictures and um that's step one and step two you're gonna drop the price five thousand dollars so if you're willing to do that then we will hold it and we'll give you 10 days and so i, I did it i'm like okay that's what i'll do i will do it so i got the professional pictures talked to my client and said are you good with this so she said yep yep and I said, fantastic. So we did that and boom, got under contract. <laughs> okay. 
Um, so again, be teachable, communicate with your co-op agents about what's happening and accept their help and even ask for their ideas. Okay. Um, inspectors. So, um, you know, it took me, I think a little while to find the right inspector that I like to work with the most. It took a few to get through. And then when eventually I did, and you know, now, you know, my inspectors is like a family run business. It's um, a son and a dad, they're veterans and they have a couple on their team and they have an office manager and, um, you know, you just got to have rhythm now and they'll do all kinds of things and they'll go everywhere and they just do a really thorough job. And if I've asked them to sponsor an event, they totally do it and just good people. Um, they'll do things like at the last minute for me sometimes if they can, um, when they're at a house that, um, is in bad shape and I'm not there where the buyer's not there and they think, oh my gosh, I would never want any buyer to have to buy this house <laughs> if they're in that position. Cause sometimes they are, they will go in and they'll call me and say, Hey, this is what we're finding. Like the foundation's really bad. This is what's happening with the foundation. Do you want me to continue? And, it, and, you know, they'll, they'll actually stop and then they'll charge the, the client much less just for going, but they won't charge for the full inspection because they didn't do a full inspection. So, so things like that. Staging and cleaning companies. This has been interesting. You know, once you start putting yourself out there, like in your social media, your LinkedIn, your uh, Facebook, you know, you do some networking events, put event right together, do some networking events, stagers, cleaning companies and moving companies. These reps will start showing up like in your LinkedIn messages, Facebook messages, next door app. Um, if you have that and you are a neighbor, if you have a neighbor profile on your next door app, you know, you could put it out there that you're looking for people who do staging, cleaning people, cleaning companies, um, moving companies, that recommendations. You're looking for recommendations for these types of people, you know, contractors, electricians, um, plumbers, painters, you know, find those people and, you know, develop a relationship with them because you will come, you will come, uh, to a point in your business as you're either a listing agent or a buyer's agent where, you know, you're going to need to be able to call somebody like I had a listing, uh, and, um, it was, we, it, we were the seller, I represent the seller and, uh, it was an FHA loan that we were accepting and the FHA appraisal, um, you know, had certain requirements that we needed to take care of, like painting a deck. And so luckily I knew a guy that I could call and just said, Hey, are you, do you have time to come look at this and how much would you charge? And it was super reasonable and I could get it done quickly so that the deal could close quickly, things like that. Okay. Um, all right. Insurance reps. So insurance reps, so people, homeowners insurance. So you want to be able to, when you're with your buyer, you're going to say, Hey, Mr. Buyer, um, when it comes to the underwriting process, once we, um, are, you know, have our under contract and we're going through the, you know, the underwriting process and that due diligence period, that contract period, you know, your lender is going to be asking you to provide a quote for the homeowner's insurance. So make sure you touch base with your lender about, about that, um, about when they'll need that, what they're going to need. And, you know, you might start getting a couple quotes from your insurance person. And if you need some other ideas, I've got some people you could talk to. So insurance reps, um, financial advisors, people that maybe um, handle like life insurance and that kind of thing. Thing, maybe attorneys who do estate planning, like people are buying houses and maybe they're like, oh gosh, if something happens to me, I want to make sure that this house gets paid off. So my spouse won't have all the burden or my, my kids won't have all the burden. Um, and I need, I need that. I need some sort of estate planning or I need some sort of life insurance to cover this. And you want to be able to have those referrals and then CPAs as well. Um, not just for your own business, but to refer to clients. So these are your partners, just to name a few, really, that you're going to want to start meeting. So here's your homework. Are you ready? All right. I'm not going to ask you to meet all these people today. I'm going to ask you to A, find three lenders in your area. 
Um, maybe these lenders are referrals from your team leaders. Maybe these lenders are referrals that you know through your clients or somebody you just know. Um, you know, try, don't just stick to just banks, maybe one bank. Um, you know, like if you, if you go at, to Bank of America, that's your bank. You could say, hey, who's a loan officer here? I want, I'm a real estate agent. I want to talk to them about their programs. I want to know about what programs and what the approval process is for my clients so I can learn. Okay, so maybe one bank or credit union. Okay, I wouldn't do too many though. One bank, maybe one credit union, and then at least one letter, regular like mortgage broker or regular mortgage lender. So like, for example, um, Mortgage One here is in West Michigan. They are just a lender and they actually lend their own money. They're not a broker. Um, Atlanta Mortgage is sort of like a broker. There's other kind of brokers where they can kind of use, uh, you know, find any types of loans. A mercantile Bank is a great lender, but they're a bank, um, but they are a great lender too. So find at least three different types of lenders, maybe one bank, maybe one credit union, and definitely one mortgage company and or also maybe a fourth of just a regular mortgage broker and have meetings, set up meetings with them. Um, you know, ask them to go to coffee, ask to come to their office. If it has to be a Zoom, do a Zoom. And just, you know, would, I'm a brand new realtor. I would really like to be able to work with you. I want to know what is your process for approving my clients. If I have a client that needs to get pre-approved, how will I reach you? Um, what if they want to talk to somebody first? Be, you know, because some lenders will just say, oh, just have them fill out an app. Well, me personally, I don't love that. It's like, well, you know, when it comes to me, if I'm going to fill out an app with my social security number and stuff, I want to talk to that lender first and get a lay of the land. Do I like that person? Do I feel like they have the programs that can help me? Um, do, they feel, do I feel like I can work with them? Like, I want to talk to them first before I just fill out an app. So are they willing to do that, <laughs> to talk to your person? And how, what is their process for taking care of clients and follow up and updating? And, and are they willing to teach you about loan programs? So though, find three at least three lenders to learn from. Okay, so um, set up meetings, set up interview, you know, talk, uh, meetings this week where you are going to um, meet with these people and get this information. Okay, um, title reps, find at least two title companies or, you know, if you're in a state where it's called attorneys and you work with attorneys at closing companies, fine. Find two, two different companies um, and find out how does title work? Who, you know, how, when do I order title? And what way do I order title? What's the timeline when I get title? <laughs> what do I got to look at? What do I have to look for? You know, are you going to be able to help me understand some of this stuff? Are you going to alert me when there's something like a big deal? Like, so I had a mentee once and I said, Hey, um, she, she and I went on a listing appointment together. And I said, what you're going to do before we do this listing is you're going to order pre-title. So I explained to her, th her that process and she did. And then the, you know, my title rep that took the order, um, let her know, hey, um, just so you know, there is a tax lien on this property and here's what it would take to actually for you to actually be able to sell this for your seller. So you need to know this. So it actually prevented them from listing, but it's a good thing that, um, they knew this before they listed it, got under contract, and the whole deal went to pot. <laughs> okay. All right. I'll get with two different title companies and not only ask the process for title, but also ask what tools, Mr. Title Company, um, do you provide me as a realtor to help me in my business? So like, for example, do they provide like cost, um, cost sheets or seller net sheets? For, um, do they provide uh, multiple offer um, sheets? Do they provide farming tools for you as an agent? Um, what do they provide to you? Marketing tools. What can they do to help you with your business? That's what I want you to know. That's what I want you to ask. Okay. And then at least one inspector, um, call at least one inspector, have a meeting, you know, ask to go to a, an inspection, um, to shadow somebody at an inspection to meet that person, whatever you got to do. Ask about the process. How do I order? What types of inspections do you do? Um, 
you know, do you know what type of inspections are required for certain things? You know, fill me in. I'm a new agent. Three different lenders, two different title reps, and at least one inspector. That is your homework. Uh, find these people, set up meetings with them, and learn from them. All right. Well, that's it for this podcast. I hope you did take notes. I hope you're excited to contact these vendors. I hope you have some ideas in mind. I hope you're going to block some time in your schedule to decide when are you going to do these meetings. That's kind of what I do suggest. You kind of think about when over the next couple of weeks can you have meetings and then when you contact these lenders, these title reps, these inspectors, you give them some options like, hey, I'm a new agent. I would love to meet with you, learn about what you do, how we can help you each other. Um, when can I meet with you? Can it be this day or that day? This time or that time? Get it going. Knock it out. You're going to have a good time. You're going to be so much more knowledgeable and feel so much more confident about doing transactions once you've done this exercise. Thanks so much. Talk to you soon.